In this video, we're going to learn how to create a list of numbers accepted from user input using Python. There's several ways we could solve this problem. One way to solve this problem would be to prompt the user for the total amount of numbers they want in the list. Then we could prompt the user for each number and append each number they enter to the list. Let's do that. First, we'll create an empty list called numbers. Then we'll prompt the user for the total amount of numbers they want in the list, and we'll store the result into a variable called total. So we'll have total is equal to int with input and the string total numbers as an argument. So this will prompt the user with the text total numbers. Then the string the user enters is going to be returned by the input function. The int function is going to convert that string to an integer number, which we'll store into total. Now, if the total entered is less than zero, this doesn't really make sense because we can't have a list with a negative amount of numbers. So in that case, we'll output an error message. We'll have print and we'll have cannot enter negative total numbers. Otherwise, what we'll do is create a loop that's going to run total number of times. We'll have here for i in range one to total plus one. So this loop body is going to run total amount of times. And the first time it runs, i is going to be set to one. Then the second time it runs, i is going to be set to two. And i will continue to increase by one with each loop iteration until the final loop iteration when i is equal to total. Then in the loop body, we'll prompt the user for each number with number is equal to int with input. And we'll have number then we'll concatenate the integer i. Then we'll concatenate the colon here. And then we'll take the number the user entered and we'll append it to the list numbers. We'll have numbers.append number. So when we call input, we pass it the string number concatenated with the integer i after it's been converted to a string using the str function. So that way we have number one, number two, number three, and so on as our prompts and then colon to indicate to the user to enter the number. Then we'll take the number they've entered and we'll append it to our list of numbers. So when this is done, we can then output our list of numbers. We'll have here print and numbers. We can now test our program out. We'll save it and run it. We'll enter four and we'll enter nine, eight, seven, and six. And here we get the list nine, eight, seven, and six. Another way to solve this problem is to continually prompt the user to enter in a number which we append to the list until they enter in a special sentinel value. Let's go over this approach. So again, we'll begin with an empty list of numbers. Then we can use a while loop to continually prompt the user to enter in each number. In the while loop condition, we'll actually use the walrus operator. We'll have number walrus operator. We'll call the input function with the string number or q to quit, then we'll check if the string doesn't equal the string q. So this here is going to prompt the user with the text number or q to quit with each loop iteration. Now q is going to be our special sentinel value where when the user enters in q, we want to stop. Now the walrus operator is going to take the string that input returns and assign it to number but the result of this expression here is going to be whatever was assigned to number. So if the user enters in 45, that's not going to equal Q. So this condition is going to be true and the loop is going to continue. But when the user does enter in Q, then Q is going to equal Q and this condition will be false and the loop is going to stop. Now, so long as that condition is true and the user has entered in a number, we'll append it to the list. We'll have numbers.append and then int number. Now, because the input function does return a string, we're again using int here to convert that string to an integer before appending it to our list of numbers. We can now save our program and try it out. And we could enter in nine, eight, seven, and six, and then q to quit. And we'll get the list nine, eight, seven, six. Finally, another approach would be to prompt the user to enter in all the numbers at once separated by spaces. We could actually solve this using one line of code with a list comprehension. We'll do that. We'll have here L is equal to 
and we'll have a list comprehension with in s for s in and we'll call input and pass it the string list with one two and dot 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 then here we'll call split then we'll output the resulting list l with print l so this call to input here is going to prompt the user to enter in the integers separated by spaces so if the user enters in let's say 987 we would get back a string like 987. now this split method here is going to take this string and split it into a list of strings based on where the spaces are so after calling the split method we would have the strings 9 8 and 7 in the list then the list comprehension will give us back the list where the in function has been applied to each one of these strings so we'll get back the list with the integers 9 8 and 7. so let's try this out we'll save the program and then run it and we'll enter in the integers 9 8 and 7 separated by spaces and we'll get back the list 9 8 and 7. so this is how we can create a list of numbers accepted from user input with python check out portfoliocourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers